I'm going to talk a bit today about the DA42 fuel system. This is just for informational purposes only, not meant to replace the POH at all. The DA42 has two wing tanks, two main wing tanks, that each have a capacity of 25 usable gallons for a total usable capacity of 50. The fuel system is operated by means of these two fuel selector levers here just behind the power levers. Each selector has an on position, a cross feed position, and an off position. The off position can only be gotten to by moving this red piece out of the way so that you can't accidentally move the fuel selector to the shutoff position. The wing tanks are in several interconnected parts as you can see here. The filler cap is on the outboard part of the tank. It's very easy for the tanks to get overfilled if they're filled too quickly because fuel needs to drain down through these tubes here. So 50 usable gallons total uses Jet A normally with certain restrictions. It can run on diesel. I'm basing this presentation off of the aircraft having TAE 125 engines. Um, there's a limitation of not having more than a five gallon imbalance between the two wing tanks. So on each side there's this wing tank. The wing tank has a filter here, a sump at the bottom. Fuel leaves the tank and goes to a fuel selector valve. That's what's controlled by the fuel selector levers in the cockpit here. Fuel goes to the engine through a filter here. There's another sump in the engine nacelle. In the case of the TAE 125 engines, we have two mechanically driven, engine driven pumps that supply high pressure fuel. There's a low pressure pump and a high pressure pump. The engine is a fuel pressure regulator controlled by the electronic control unit for the engine that regulates the fuel pressure. Not all the fuel is used. Some is then returned back and this fuel is now heated and needs to be cooled. So it's going to go back to a fuel cooler in the back of the engine nacelle before being returned to the wing tank. Fuel quantity indications displayed to the pilot on the MFD. Uh, there are temperature and quantity probes in the wing tanks and those readouts are displayed here. There's also fuel flow quantity indications here in gallons per hour. Here you have the sump in the engine nacelle. That would be this one right here. And this is the wing tank sump right here. So fuel normally is drawn from the wing tank, goes to the engine on that side, and then is returned to that wing tank via the fuel cooler on that side. However, each engine can also be run in the cross-feed position. Uh, so let's look at a more simplified version of this fuel flow here. Let's say that both engine fuel selectors are set to the on position. In that case, fuel is drawn from the wing tank, goes to the respective engine, and then is returned to that wing tank via the fuel cooler on that side. So here the left tank draws fuel, or left tank fuel goes to the left engine, and then the portion of the fuel that's not used goes back to the fuel cooler and then back to the tank. And same for the right side. In this scenario, the left engine is set to cross feed and the right engine is set to on. With the left engine in the cross feed position, the left engine is drawing fuel from the right tank and then is returning fuel to the right tank via the right side fuel cooler. And the right engine is in the on position, so the right engine is also drawn from the right side and returning to the right side. In this scenario, the right engine has failed and the fuel selector lever has been brought to the off position, cutting off the flow of fuel to the right engine. And the left engine is in the on position, so it's drawing fuel from the left tank and returning fuel to the left tank via the left fuel cooler. In this one here, the left engine has failed and fuel selector has been brought to off and the right engine is set to cross feed. So the right engine is drawing from the left tank 
and returning fuel to the left tank via the left side fuel cooler. There are also these auxiliary tanks in each engine to sell, 13.7 gallons each. There is no fuel quantity readout for the aux tanks. Um, the fuel from the aux tanks uh, is pulled from there by an electric pump that is operated with these two switches here on the center console. They're just on off switches. When you turn that switch on, you turn this electric pump on and you open this valve here to allow fuel to be pulled from the aux tank and from there it goes into the wing tank on that side. When you turn the aux pumps on you're supposed to do it simultaneously to prevent a fuel imbalance. Um, the pumps will then turn off automatically when either the aux tank is empty, there's a low level sensor in there, or the wing tank is full, or if you turn them off, obviously. The fuel that's pulled from the aux tank joins the return fuel coming back from the engine uh, and then goes back to the wing tank. So here you have the return fuel, the heated return fuel from the engine, goes into the fuel cooler, gets cooled, and then here is the fuel being pulled out of the aux tank via the pump, and they meet up here, and then all that fuel goes back to the wing tank on that side. Here's another view of the aux tank. This is the low level sensor here that will turn the pumps off when the aux tank is depleted. This is a filter here, so fuel comes out of the tank. It's pulled through by this electric pump that you operate with those switches. It then goes on through this valve here. That valve is also opened by the switches. And that's where it meets up the return fuel coming back from the engine. So here's the heated fuel coming back from the engine. It goes into the fuel cooler, gets cooled, and then comes out here. And this is where it meets up with the fuel from the aux tank. And then that all continues on to go back to the wing tank and eventually to the engine. This is a picture on the bottom aft part of the engine to sell. The fuel cooler is up in here. So there's this little duct that brings cooling air up into flow over the fuel cooler to cool it and then this is a outlet for the air. And then there's a sump for the aux tank as well located right here. 